Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Good morning. As we come into this study, the challenge that was presented before you this last week, shall we now ask our Heavenly Father for his guidance and his direction so that we might understand more of what has been presented so that we may more clearly be able to explain and give reason for the faith that is within us. Shall we ask now for his guidance in prayer? Gracious Father in heaven, we recognize that we have all sinned and we fall short of your glory. We know, Father, that we have great need of you. We know, Father, that we need your forgiveness and your cleansing. Help us now, Father, direct us in the path that you would have us to follow. Be with us now as we assemble together. We thank you for the promise that you have given, that where two or more, there you will be also. Open our minds, open our thoughts, open our hearts, so that we might receive that that you would have us to receive at this time. We thank you for these opportunities. We seek, Father, that your Holy Spirit may be with us, that your angels may attend us. Direct us to this end. For this we thank you, and for this we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, last week, I gave you all a challenge, right? What was the challenge from last week? The challenge has been that we're going to look to understand this portion of the book of Daniel, starting in verse 924. As Brother Theodore has been presenting, we have many symbolic numbers. One of those numbers is the number 490. Now, it's interesting to me, as I as I had prepared for this, using the alternate readings of Daniel 924, that 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to restrain the transgression and to seal up an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and the prophet, and to anoint the most holy. Now, here in the 1769 Oxford Revised King James, they place this as beginning in the 20th of Artaxerxes, assuming meaning that this means the 20th year of Artaxerxes, but they give reference to Numbers 1434 and Ezekiel 4.6. What is the importance of those two verses? Well, those two verses, of course, uh, tell us a day to a year, a day to a year. It's, a, it's doubled in both of them, right? Correct. Translated as a day for a year in the King James, but it's a day to a year, literally. And um, the reason why they begin in the 20th art of Xerxes, at that time, uh, they were using Usher's chronology. Right. And, and Usher has um, art of Xerxes reign begin in uh, 570. 4 BC, not 564 BC. Right. So they're going to start instead of his, his, um, so they're going to start it later and then they're going to have the 70th week, the midst of the week, Christ's crucifixion in 33 AD. So, so it kind of works out, but that, that's the way that, that it was done, uh, for a long time actually before the, the Millerites. So, well, I find it, I find it very interesting that in this in this particular version of the King James, mm -hmm. that they would make this application showing the day for a year to prophetic symbols. Now, as a question, was Uriah Smith a complete supporter of a day for a year? Yeah. But yet he rejected the 2,520 and the 2520 is a symbol seven times. Yeah. And, and his reasons had to, weren't very good reasons, but, but, you know, he wasn't rejecting a day for a year and doing that. He just didn't take, he didn't say, he said the year, the word year is not there. It just says, you know, seven. So he tried to apply it as uh, Jesenius does to just being an adjective of intensity. Hence my question did he accept this completely? Yeah, he accepted a day for a year completely. But, but no. he, yeah, but he didn't apply it there because he didn't have a year, right? It doesn't say seven years. It doesn't right. even say seven times, right? So, 
So, I mean, he's consistent. It's just that he fails to understand Leviticus 26. And what about, what about William Prescott? Well, he rejects the day for a year. And then we come down to a pair of um, theologians. They became great friends in the 1940s. But by the time we come to the end of the 70s, they um, had decided that things were not according to what they saw the Hebrew as saying. And here I'm referring to Cottrell and I'm referring to Desmond Ford. Did Desmond Ford believe this time that this was a time period here that could be applied as part of the 2300 days? No. So here we have a 490 year period, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What is important for us to recognize about 490? Well, it's 10 Jubilee cycles. Okay. It's 10 Jubilee cycles. When Peter asked Christ, how oft should I forgive my brother? As many as seven times? What was Christ's response? I can answer all the questions if you want. 70, 70 times seven. And how much is 70 times seven? That's William. 490, ain't it? Exactly. So both William and Iran had had made this jump, and I agree with them. So, so the problem is that the way that modern scholarship looks at the Bible is they don't they don't really accept it as inspired, and they definitely don't look at uh, these symbols as important. You know, so they're they're not going to say, well, when Jesus says seventy times seven, that has nothing to do with Daniel's prophecy, or when he talks about um, you know the two Lamechs, you know, the one with uh, the descendant of Cain who. Uh, that the curse should happen 70 times seven. Um, You know, they just won't connect those things. And yet this is a common way in which the Jews not only wrote, but understood the scriptures. And it's rejected. That idea is rejected by modern scholarship as sort of superstition. So they don't look for anything hidden in the scriptures and they don't, they don't really look for anything truly prophetic. So in this verse, when we are looking at this, at this time in earth's history, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to restrain the transgression and to seal up an end of sins. Now, when we look at this word determined, if we are studying the word itself, which occurs only here, in a Hebrew translation, what does this word determined, which is Hebrew 2852, what is it properly meaning? Cut off. Why is it important for us to note, sister, that this was cut off? Well, it shows that, that there is there's a longer span of time that it was cut off from. But every time I read cut or cut off i'm 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 thinking of of the covenant sacrifices could we also in the context of what's being said here say that these 70 weeks are reserved for thy people would that help us in our conversation right now well that that would work i mean I, i don't know if i'd use the word reserved you could you say marked out maybe that's one way of translating okay So we have these 70 weeks. Now, covering the portions of the spirit of prophecy, and this quote that that we're going to ask about right now, from manuscript number 8 of 1874, the provision was made, but they would not receive it. Is this not a very apt description of what was occurring at the time of Christ's advent to Jerusalem. Had the Jews been given this prophecy many years before Christ came, were there any that understood the time in which they were living? And if so, who were they? Well, I mean, we know um, Anna and um, that other guy. Simeon? Yeah. But 
Anna and Simeon understood it, and who else? Couldn't we say that the wise men that came from the east understood this? Well, the they, the they understood something. I mean, I mean, there's probably lots of people. I mean, the Jews in general had an idea that the Messiah was going to come. And, I mean, they were looking for a Messiah, just the wrong kind. But So, <clears throat> this verse covering 70 weeks or 490 years. We have 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. We have a time frame. This is to seal up the end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness. Now, verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Agreed, Stephen. Mary and Joseph understood. Now, if we have seven plus three score and two, how many weeks are there? 69. So are we complete then? Do we have a full 70 weeks being shown by Daniel 9.25? No, you have to add verse 26 and 27 to understand the 70th week. Okay. So now, as a question, would this look correct? Okay, I don't see any change on this point. Just a moment. The screen still, change now? No, you're still on the first thing that we saw. You're still on verse 24, is all it shows. Just a moment. Is that Has that changed? Yep. Okay, so if we have seven weeks, we have 49 years. If we have 62 weeks, we would have... 7 times 62, or 434 years. If we then have one week, we would have seven years. Would this very simple line look correct? Mm -hmm. Except streets and walls aren't built at the end of the 49 years. No, but they they should be begin, because don't we need a, a way of salvation? Isn't that our walk? Yeah, but the streets and walls aren't built there. That's okay. all I'm saying. All right. Streets and walls are built 13 years after the, the third decree in the 20th year of Artaxerxes. Right? Okay. So if the decree is in the seventh year, then it's in the 20th year the streets and walls are built. That's 13 years later, not 49 years. I'll make changes with this later. Thank you. Okay. So here, Mrs. White in this document combines Daniel 9, 24 to 27 with the parable of the wedding. The provision was made, but they would not receive it. <clears throat> the father himself had provided a ransom, even a sacrifice. His own dear son submitted himself to his father's requirements and came into the sinful world, became a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. He went about doing good, speaking in tones of tenderness, saying in the deepest and most fervent and sweetest accents ever uttered, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And he assures us that we shall find rest to our souls. Again, he sendeth forth servants, saying, tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready come into the marriage but they made light of it and went their ways one to his farm another to his merchandise the great king himself had made a marriage for his son he has sent forth his servants for many hundred years saying come for all things are ready but how little does the world heed the invitation they make light of it and go their ways to their worldly pursuits and worldly pleasures the same as they have done for centuries. But the king sendeth forth his armies and destroys those murders and burns up their city. And we are told in the ninth chapter of Daniel, 26th verse, that the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the end thereof shall be with a flood. Then he saith to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which are bidden are not worthy. Go therefore into the highways 
and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. Now, in this situation, are we not being bidden to understand the time in which we live? Are we not being asked to study, to show ourselves approved unto God? And does that not mean that we are to be understanding the prophecies so that we may clearly explain them? Now, one of the one of the issues that we deal with and have been dealing with for a number of years has been whether or not we are fully understanding what the prophecies mean for us today. Now, I'm going to jump to a different program. Uh, so just a comment about, you know, the prophecy. So, you know, one of the things we see people do, there's two different errors, preterism and futurism. Right. Uh, preterism, they they look at these prophecies and they try to apply this to the second century BC. And they say that the book of Daniel is written in the second century. And this is talking about Atticus Epiphanes and stuff like that. Right. And then you have futurism that takes these prophecies and tries to make, you know, they'll talk about the 70 weeks of Daniel is soon to be fulfilled. Right. Right. And, and then of course you have people who sort of mix things, right. That is, um, uh, you know, they, they'll, they'll agree that it was fulfilled historically with Christ, but then they'll try to apply uh, the 70 weeks in some way uh, to the present um, in sort of a direct prophecy. And of course we know as historicists that uh, the prophecies of the Bible are fulfilled, you know, as prophecies, they're, they're written about things that are going to happen in the future. And we understand them after they are fulfilled and their history becomes a, um, a comparison to what's happening. So history is repeated, not the prophecies being repeated. So it's just something that I've said before, but I just wanted to say it again. Okay. You changed something else. Okay. In a moment. In, in the 14th chapter of Luke, verse 16, we find that there was made a great supper and many were bidden. Servants were sent forth to say to those that were bidden, come, for all things are now ready. But they made an excuse. As we have been studying, many of us over the last several years, one of the biggest excuses that I've had to listen to is has been that, well, the Hebrew doesn't say that. Many times we have failed to follow directly Father Miller's rules. And if we're not willing to follow Miller's rules, we have some problems. If we're not willing to follow Miller's rules and to follow the spirit of prophecy, we have an even greater problem. Now, from four spirit of prophecy, we find this. God saw that many of his professed people were not building for eternity and in his care and love. He was about to send a message of warning to arouse them from their stupor and prepare them for the coming of their Lord. The warning was not to be entrusted to the learned doctors of divinity or the popular ministers of the gospel. Had these been faithful watchmen, diligently and prayerfully searching the scriptures, they would have known the time of night. The prophecies of Daniel and John would have revealed to them the great events about to take place. If they had faithfully followed the light already given, some star of heavenly radiance would have been sent to guide them into all truth. The number 490 has meaning for us because, as we have addressed in the past, there was 490 years from the time that Saul became king to Israel going into captivity. There was 490 years from the time that the temple was erected until the time that the temple was destroyed. No, it was 420 years to its destruction. Okay. 490 years to its restoration. To its restoration. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's 490 years between the two uh, um, dedications of the temple. Thank you. Here's 490 that is cut off for Daniel's people. W.W. W. Prescott made it very clear that he wished to never again have to 
give a presentation on the 2300 days, of which the 490 is the beginning portion. Here again, many of his professed people were not building for eternity. Now, as you mentioned, and hopefully this can be seen by all, we have a third decree. The streets and the walls were being built by the 20th year of Artaxerxes, and we would begin that in 457. Is that correct? 457 B.C.? Yeah, so 457 B.C. and then 444, the streets and walls are built. Yeah. Okay, but this, the end of the seventh week would have taken it to 408 B.C. Would that be correct? Yeah, but we have no event there. It's not meant to mark some event. It's what? just to be a jubilee cycle, right? So the whole purpose of this is to illustrate, you know, the connection to the two Lamics, for one. But um, that it st- demonstrates a jubilee cycle and then two two periods of 31 weeks. Right? Okay. So because you're going to divide the 62 into 31 weeks, and that's going to show that Christ is crucified in 31 AD in the midst of the week. Correct. Now, taking again things that we have we've addressed in the past, October 22nd, 1844 was noted as being the 10th day of the seventh month of 1844. Mm -hmm. We cannot prove this from scripture. However, if the pattern is correct, then it is possible that the third decree went forth on the 10th day of the seventh month, that Christ was baptized on the 10th day of the seventh month, and that Stephen was stoned on the 10th day of the seventh month. Yeah. So, so we would know that the 70th week begins on the 10th day of the seventh month and ends on the 10th day of the seventh month. And it ends with the stoning of Stephen. It begins with the baptism of Christ. So we would know that. Um, now the decree does not go forth on the 10th day of the seventh month. The going okay. forth decree is in the spring. Okay. Right. So, because that's when they leave Babylon, the decree goes into effect in the fall. And the midst of that, from when they arrive at Jerusalem on the first day of the fifth month, three days later, bring the gold and silver to the temple. And then Ezra makes that three-day call to repentance, and that ends on the 20th day of the ninth month. It just marks the 10th day of the seventh month as the center of that period of time from when he arrives to Jerusalem to put Artaxerxes' decree into effect and then uh, implements it you know, like use two of the the uh, two of the aspects. I, there's another word. Stipulations isn't quite the right word, but two of two of the um, uh, the four things that he's allowed to do. So the right. banishment and the confiscation of goods. He can also um, to imprisonment and to death. Right. So those are other things. So he enacts the civil authority, and so the tenth day of the seventh month is the center of that. So it's not like on the 10th day of the seventh month, specifically, you know, we have no evidence that he enacts the decree on that date or anything. It's a period of time in which the 10th day of the seventh month is the center. But that chiasm shows that that's when we would start counting the 70th week, the 70 weeks. Okay. And, right. So that, that would be my point. So the 10th day of the seventh month is marked by a chiasm in 457. Um, but we, we it definitely the decree does the decree does not go in uh, does not go the going forth of the decree is in the spring. Okay. Now, is everybody else comfortable with what Brother Theodore just presented? Okay. To continue with this, as he was just addressing, here we have decree being presented in 457. We have. 434 years, and the midpoint of that would be 191 BC. Now, is there anything specific that we see about the digits of 191 BC? Is there anything that we can relate to this? The 11-9 or 9-11. Exactly. Now, it was Brother Stephen that pointed out this midpoint. In 191 BC, 
the midpoint means that we now have two time periods of 217 years. Is there anything from Millerite history that we would note about 217? Yeah. So just to be clear, back in 2015, I figured this out. So um, so that that's July 21st. So I understood that the 217 at that time, we didn't, you know, back in 2015, we didn't have midnight yet. Right. Right. So and, and we didn't have July 7th yet or t- July 21st, I mean. Right. And we, and we didn't have that from Ezekiel's prophecy yet either. Um, but but the main thing that I saw here is that these 200, 217 years were 31 weeks. That is, it's 31 times seven. And that was the significant uh, point back then. And, and I knew 191 BC was the center, but I didn't know what it meant. Right. So, right. so, uh, but what I looked at is you have 31 times seven and in the midst of the week in 31 AD, Jesus is crucified. But now we can also connect this to midnight. And in my study dealing with Samuel Snow's letters and, you know, the mid midnight being July 21st, um, that that's, that's, that's a midpoint of a chiasm. Right. And L. White says it's midway that the midnight cry was given. So we understand now Boston to be midnight and Exeter to be the midnight cry. So we're going to look at that in my study a bit more. Um, so because we, we did last week go through Samuel Snow's letters. OK, now, as as a question, these this 217, we would see as being midnight mm-hmm. as a symbol of midnight. And also raffia. Agreed, but I'm I'm looking at the midnight for a reason. Mm-hmm. Who is the midnight for in the first 217 years? Well, you have Greece and Rome. Is that what you're referring to? Could we could we say that this midnight, leading up to 191, brings Greece to its midnight, basically the close of its time as the world dominant power? Could that be a fair statement? Because in 191 BC, Greece is going to meet Rome at Thermopylae. Greece is going to lose to Rome at Thermopylae. So is 191 midnight for the Greek Empire? Does that make sense to you? Doesn't make sense to me. Um, cause I don't understand how we are applying midnight cause it would be a way mark in a line. So, I mean, I would mark midnight as you know the midpoint 191 bc but we also have you know raffia as well so i'm not sure okay now we have a second midnight going from 191 to 27 a.d what occurs within this period of 217 years what occurs within the world stage in this period of 217 years that involves God's people. They make a league? Yes. Agreed. Is it important that they make the league in the, in what we've been studying? I would so think, were, so. Yeah, think so. Were they supposed to make a league with any of the nations around them? No, they weren't. Okay. So as, as we would go forward from here, you have this 217-year period, and first... In 217, you have a period of 91 years, and then you have your midpoint again, but you have a a period between these 91-year periods of 252 years. In 317 BC, Ptolemy the Great decides to get married. He chooses to get married to his wife's cousin that was his wife's lady-in-waiting. So he is choosing to get married while he is married. Is that type of a league allowed? Is this type of marriage allowed according to scripture? No, it's not. It is through his marriage to Berenike, his wife's cousin, lady in waiting, that the Ptolemaic line is descended. But now we have this period of 252 years that occurs after this league is there anything that we have have ever noted about 252 being important yep 2520 uh off of that 
Exactly. Now so, we so what happens in 317 BC? Ptolemy the Great, Ptolemy, no, Ptolemy the First marries Berenike, his wife's cousin, his wife's lady in waiting. He puts aside his first wife in order to marry Berenike, and she is the one through whom all of the other Ptolemies are descended. Okay. Unholy alliance. An unholy alliance is very correct. So we have this symbol here of midnight. We have this symbol of the league and showing here at the midpoint that there's this period of 252 years. So again, we're dealing with different symbols being tied right back into Daniel 9, 24 to 27. Now by 65 BC, you wind up with the Roman general Pompey, who now comes and is taking control of the area of Syria and is coming into more contact with the people of God, with the Jews. Now, it's interesting because 96 years earlier, according to Uriah Smith, what had the Jews sought? So in 161 BC, what were the Jews seeking with Rome? Those were wanting protection, weren't they? Well, the, the actual point was they wanted this league of friendship with Rome. Right. So they could, so they would protect them. Was this something that they were supposed to do? No, it wasn't. Were they to enter into a league with Rome? No, not a pagan, pagan, uh, nation. So here we are again. We are seeing that in this period of 252 years, the Jews set aside their reliance upon God and begin to rely upon the pagans around them, the nations around them, which is a rejection of the warnings that Moses had given them. So in this period of midnight, the Jews are choosing whom they are going to serve. So this symbolic number of 217 is midnight for their relationship with the creator of the universe. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I would put it that way. So, so I don't quite agree with you. All right. So I do think the 217 years point to midnight, but the midnight, there's only one midnight there. And that's the midpoint. It, it's like in, um, the story of Ezra, where you have the two periods of 54 days with, um, Pentecost in the middle. Now, 54 days represents midnight. So it just shows that that you have a chiasm that's pointing to something as midnight. So the midnight would be 191 BC. Um, you know, I know it's kind of a little technical detail, but I just don't think I would say that there's two midnights here. There's one midnight which divides uh, uh, a history of Greece and a history of Rome that, okay. that mirror each other. That, that's the way I would put it. Yeah, I know I'm being really persnickety, but um, I just think it would bis be misleading to say there's two midnights. It doesn't really make sense. But maybe it's just my mind. Well, it's, this is the way that, that I've been looking at this as, as I've mm -hmm. been working this through. Yeah, I understand. Okay, so if we have a divided period of 252 years, mm -hmm. we then also have two periods of 126 years. Mm -hmm. So just as we would have two periods of 1,260 mm -hmm. yeah. dealing with pagan and papal Rome, here we have two periods of 126, yeah. one where Greece has been dominant and one where Rome is, is becoming dominant. Yeah, so the structures are right. I just didn't agree with how you were explaining it. Okay. Right. Now, so. here we come, and this, this was kind of shocking for me this last week, so I, I have to ask questions. I ask a question. Yes, sir. You said that, that 126, it, they both split at mid, uh, midnight, right? Correct. So both, uh, both the um, midnight for the church and for 
the Greece in power was at the same time, right? Here we would have the first 126 when Greece was in power. Yes. Right. Here we would have the 126 where the church of that time sought their league with Rome. Oh, okay. All right. I'll just, that, I'll just, because you put it at midnight, I was wondering if the church midnight was at the same point in time as Greason's midnight was. Okay. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't understand, I don't understand that question. It, like, it seems like you're, you're being confused about what this means, uh, William. Right. So what we're looking at is there's this structure that exists that typifies the week of Christ. Right. And that week of Christ we see in our history as well, because these are just chiasms. But this one has the 1260 symbolized as well, which is going to be for 1260 years for paganism, 1260 years for papalism. And it exists here in this 252 years from 317 BC to 65 BC. So, okay. So I, I just don't know how you're trying to apply it to the church. What? I wouldn't. I, was talking, I meant the Jewish people is what I meant. But it, but it's not necessarily for the Jewish people. It's typifying something that's going to happen. But it's okay. right. But this is this is really dealing here uh, with with Greece and Rome as being types of something. So just as the week of Christ is going to be for the Jews within that period of that seventy years for the Jews is typified in the history of these kingdoms <clears throat> what happens in the 70th week. That That's the way I understand it. Okay. Because right. there isn't, like, anything to deal with the Jews in 191 B.C. per se, right? I mean, this is about Greece and Rome. But there is in that 126 years, you know, there's going to be the league with Rome. Rome has risen to power. The Jews may have a league with Rome. And, and that's going to lead ultimately to the destruction of Jerusalem. So. You know, as we've been studying in Daniel chapter eleven. Yeah, Daniel, well, I was looking. Well, I was looking at it as, as the twenty five twenty. You know, it's the scattering and the gathering of is, Israel, right? So you use the one twenty six, and that's the. To me, that was this. Um, well, maybe I'm just out there. I don't know. You're trying to mix things together that don't fit together. Okay. That's the way I would look at what your your, your questions would mean to me. But All right. Uh, the, the purpose the, the purpose behind these studies has been so that we can address different points, so that we can all understand different things, because we're all going to be needing to be able to explain this to others. Mm -hmm. So all of these questions are good questions. Mm -hmm. Now, as I looked at this to begin with, as I, as I was preparing for this, here we have a situation. We have this midnight, this midpoint Thermopylae in 191 BC. Uriah Smith dates the league with Rome as being in 161 BC. Miller dates it as being in 158 BC. How many years are there between Thermopylae and what Smith sees as being a league with Rome? So you're going to have 30 years and then three years. Okay. So okay. I'm going to put that into this, and then we have the three, right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything important about a 30-year period? Well, from Christ's baptism to, uh, or from his birth to his baptism is 30 years, and then there's three years to his crucifixion. Three and a half, it, right? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, three and a half, but, you know, we'll, we'll say three. Okay. You're going to be 33 when he's crucified. Okay. Now, from Smith's League with Rome in 161 to 27 AD, we have a time period of 187 years. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep, because you're just adding 26 to 161. Okay. From Smith's League with Rome to the crucifixion, we have 191 years. Mm -hmm. And then again... From Miller's League with Rome to the end of the 70 weeks, we again have 191 years. Mm -hmm. Now, does all that make sense? 
Mm -hmm. And these are all just wheels within wheels. Okay. Now, I have been looking and considering several other points for all sorts of different things that are coming up. Here, as you were just pointing out, Theodore, you have this 30 years. So in that 30-year period from the time that they defeated Greece to the point that Smith notes the league with Rome, could we say that Rome was being prepared further for its dominance on the world stage? Mm -hmm. and, well, and, and for its um, connection to the Jews as prophetically significant, because it's going to lead to Rome is going to be the power that's going to crucify Christ. Right. So how that league with Rome, you know, the Jews aren't connected to Rome. Rome isn't then going to be the one that establishes the vision. Right. So this is all part of the purpose of Rome prophetically. Okay. Now, when I looked at this, when I've been considering this, to try to understand more fully Daniel chapter 9, it was interesting to me that this number, 187, would come up here being tied to the time of Christ and the time of his ministry. Now, in all that we've been studying, 1833 was a pivotal year because was that not the time where Miller first began giving his message to the world? Well, that's when he gets... Sorry, Paul. Yeah, so that's when he's going to get his credentials. Okay. He begins preaching in 1831. Stars fall from heaven. Okay. Meteor shower. Meteor shower. Yeah. 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 The falling of the stars. So it was intriguing to me that 1833 would be tied with the year 2020 by 187 years. So the year in which the Nashville warning was being given is being tied with this, with Father Miller, with the stars falling, with all sorts of other symbols. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, in 1833, the 191 can also be tied with that because that brings us to our current year. Now, 1863, as has been pointed out, can be tied with 2024 with the 161 that Smith would use with the League with Rome. And as I had pointed out at the last camp meeting, 2024 is the 490th anniversary of the establishment of the Jesuits. Now, it's interesting to me because the establishment of the Jesuits took place on the 15th of August of the Julian calendar of 1534. So 158. We're mm -hmm. in it. We are in a time right now where so many of these symbols are coming together. Are we able to properly discern the time in which we are currently living? Now, I know my time is up. Are there any other questions? Any other thoughts? Well, I'm just thinking of eight times 15 is 120, and that was the years of Noah before the ark was, was, was ready to float. So it's the time of probation. Right. Is our probation about to close? This is one of the reasons why I cannot say that July 18th of 2020, that that warning message that went out was a sin. It definitely was not a sin. There's too many things that are tied to 187. There are too many things that are tied to 158, to 161, and to 191. We need to know the time in which we are living so that the message that needs to go forth may go forth clearly. This is why the symbolic understanding of numbers is so very important. Shall we close with prayer? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the warnings that you are providing. We thank you for the ways in which you are opening your word for us to understand. We pray, Father, for the meeting that is next to come. Be with Brother Theodore as he speaks. Direct us now. Help us that we may more directly study 
to show ourselves approved to you so that we may explain better to those with whom we come in contact. Help us now. For this, we thank you. For this, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.